Hey team, it's Colby Fea. Today I'm going to walk you through building a mapping app with Gatsby and React Leaflet for your next summer road trip. If this is your first time and you want to learn more about developer tech, make sure to subscribe below. So what exactly are we going to build? We'll be creating a map like this that shows a road trip across the entire country. You'll also be able to click into each location, which will show a picture and either a list of things you will do or things you have done. We're all going through some challenging times right now, but we can still be optimistic that we can still have our fun summer road trip in some point. Before we start, there's a couple things you'll need. You'll need either Node or Yarn and the Gatsby CLI. If you need to get set up or you don't know what either of those things are, check out the description for links to more info. So let's dive in. The first thing we want to do is scaffold a new Gatsby app using a Gatsby starter for Leaflet. Once that's done, we can navigate into the folder, run the develop command, and we have our server. Here we have a basic mapping app using Gatsby and Leaflet. Since this comes with a few basic demo features, we want to rip those up before we actually get started. So once we open our index file under pages, we want to clean out a few things for the demo. The first thing we want to do is clear out this map effect function, which this contains all the demo work. And then we can clear out this marker from the map component. We can also update this to use the shorthand. Now that we ripped out the demo code, we can get rid of some of these variables that we import since we're no longer using them. So we can clear out all of this, all of the pop-up content, all of the time content, the marker rep itself, the zoom, the Gatsby astronaut, and the reference to use ref. So once you clean out all the demo code, you should really have a map that just doesn't do anything at this point. So the next thing we want to do is create a file under data that includes all the locations that we want to use. With that file, we can now add all of our locations. Our locations file is pretty much made up of an exported constant called locations that includes an array of objects that includes our metadata for each place. So here we have a place name, a date, an image optionally, a location, which is a Latin long, and a to-do, which is an array of a list of things we want to do. Now that we have our locations file, we can import it into our application. So import, we want to destructure the locations import from data locations. Then we can simply console log this out to make sure it works. And once we reload our page, we can open up our developer tools and we can see our locations array. The next thing we're going to do is create two functions. I pasted the code in, but you can follow along with the commits using the GitHub link in the info. The first function here, create trip points geojson, is going to loop through all of our locations and create a feature collection, which is a JSON document, and create the metadata that we need to create a bunch of points on the map. Our second function is going to do something pretty similar, but instead of just creating points, it needs to also grab the previous location so that it can create a line using both of those points. If you notice here, if we don't have a previous stop, we return an empty array. This is because if we don't have a previous stop, we can't actually create a line because we only have one point. So now that we have our two functions, we can actually get started in some of the code. So the first thing we want to do is using the leaflet element here, we want to loop through each of its layers and remove the layer. What this does is clean up our map state to make sure that we're starting fresh each time. Next, using those two functions, we're going to create both a trips points and a trip lines. This is what we're going to use as location data for our map. Now that we have our location data, the next thing we need to do is create leaflet geojson instances using those geojson documents. So once we paste that in, we notice that we're also using the leaflet variable here. So we need to actually import that from our package. With both of those new layers, we can go ahead and add those to the map. So through each one, we add to the leaflet element, which is our map. Once our page reloads, we can see that we now have a line on our markers on our map, but we don't want to require somebody to have to zoom into this each time and center it. So what can we do about that? So the first thing we want to do is get the bounds. That's going to be from the geojson layers that we created, and it's going to be the geographic area that represents that geojson document. Once we have those bounds, we want to tell our leaflet element or our map to fit its view to those bounds. And once the map reloads, we can see that the map now zooms and centers to our lines and our markers. So if you remember our map, it doesn't seem like the markers quite match up to what we want to look at. 
So how can we fix that? We're gonna create a new function that we're gonna to utilize to create those markers. So pasting the code there, we have our new function trip stop point to layer. The cool thing about the GeoJSON layer that we created above is that we can pass a function into it so we can customize each layer that it creates on the map. So each time this function actually gets ran, we get the feature, which we can create our properties, which includes all of our metadata. We can create a new list and a bunch of HTML in our string format, add our image if we have one, and create our text block, then ultimately create a pop-up with a leaflet instance, set the content, create our new marker layer, set our HTML content with a div icon, as well as bind the pop-up, and finally return our layer. You might be wondering why we're utilizing string HTML here. Well, since we're using the Leaflet API directly, we can't actually use React to interface with it, so we have to resort to an HTML string. Now to use this function, we want to pass a second argument to our new GeoJSON layer here for the points, which passes in our function to the point to layer argument. Now, if you look back at our map, we'll see that we can't even see the markers anymore. So the issue is we're passing in custom HTML for a div icon, and we just need to add a little bit of styling to make sure we can see it. So what we can do is head over to our home.scss file in our application, paste in these styles, which goes through a couple different classes and apply some styles to them. And once you reload the map, we can now see our markers and click on our marker and see our pop-up. So this gets us our basic road trip feature. It stops short of being able to provide the styles from the demo, but if you want to follow along with that, check out the GitHub demo and it has all the styles commit by commit. And if you follow along with me, yay, we created our mapping app. If you want the code that we went through or want to follow along with the commits, check out the GitHub link in the description. If you're interested in learning more about maps, I have a ton of resources in the description for you to get started. If you want more developer walkthroughs like this, definitely subscribe for future updates. Otherwise, thanks for watching.